Sarah, I'd like to tell you. Yes, very well, thank you. Thanks for uh, uh, giving me a moment. Really, just to talk about endpoint um, detection and response, which okay. is the conversation today. Uh, so just, Alex, give me a bit of background to uh, the thinking in the way that the, the service evolved and was developed. Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> we've got the managed detection and response service at the moment, which is more the eyes and ears um, into the network. What we, what we saw was, um, Obviously, you've got you know advanced threats that are out there developing all the time. You've got um, traditional antivirus that's you know on most um, corporate networks. You've got IT teams that are, are there as a resource to uh, respond to all sorts of different um, activities. You know within the within the business, not just one technology stack. You know a, multi, a multitude of effectively you know everything that company delivers. So what we saw was that. With an endpoint detection and response service using a next gen um, sort of endpoint protection platform that you know backed by a, a dedicated security team which um, effectively acts as like an extension to you know an in-house security team or a, an IT team um, we're able to um, prevent remediate you know and um, stop attacks that effectively um, could take an organization out of the game you know it could take down their um, critical systems the way they uh, operate with their end customers you know internal applications everything that could be affected from the attack so um, working on all the all the challenges that organizations face today um, an EDR solution was and service was kind of a no-brainer for us to move into from a managed shop perspective okay and then what can EDR detect and respond to that traditional antivirus solutions can't yeah, so where where you sort of uh, traditional antivirus is heavily based on signatures, updates, and you know configuring sort of scans on demand access scans, things along those lines. You um, you've got the traditional detection vectors that you normally would do with um, traditional AV. You know that's obviously baked into the product, but you've also got um, a, an advanced behavioral AI engine. So that's there and it's it's monitoring from start to finish in, in terms of you know what a process is doing on the box you know if there is something that's behaving slightly out of out of the ordinary um, and really it, it it detects the known threats but it also looks at unknown threats and by tracking its behavior and um, the interactions it has with other applications and systems registry keys etc um, and so it can pick up on things such as you know um, new strains of ransomware uh, and try to stop them before they even start. It can pick up on you know uh, attachments that come from emails and uh, and obviously opening them and what they relate to. Um, and it's really it's really that having that extra layer of detection that allows the prevention engine to work so well um, and really protect your organisation. Okay. So how, how does the service work? Because it's kind of a, it's a blend of technology and people. So. Yeah. So yeah, so we um, we usually like to workshop out you know key requirements with the customer. You know we um, we plan and strategize around um, how businesses operate, so the different user groups, different um, needs within organisations such as production servers or end user machines, um, and we we workshop that out so we can define uh, policies that allow the end users to continue with their day to day tasks, um, and we don't interfere with that. However, if something is to trigger, um, such as an infection or a, a, an attempt at, at malware, the SOC is there to respond to those attacks. So we have defined SLAs that allow us to, um, to make sure we are responding to attacks in real time. And it can be the case of um, you know, an end user um, opens an email, um, downloads an attachment, runs it, um, goes to make a drink. And in that time, um, ransomware has completely encrypted his, his system, you know, locked a lot of his critical files. Um, and while he's making his drink, the SOC can actually kill the process, you know, quarantine any files, remediate the threat in entirety from the box, and uh, even roll back encrypted files as well. So by the time the user comes back, um, sits down with his drink, you know, his coffee or, or whatever his choice may be, the, the system appears to be completely as it was as he walked away. Um, but in that time, the SOC has reacted to the threat, remediated the threat and rolled back all the, all the files. So got that end user back up and running in record time, really.